So we just talked about the formation of acetals and ketals, and I mentioned that these uh, functionalities can serve as protecting groups for carbonyls. Um, and the reason is, is that acetals um, and ketals are very resistant, resistant to, uh, to anionic uh, reagents, okay? So uh, they, they don't react um, with uh, anything like, um, so lithium aluminum hydride, for example. Remember, this is the bazooka of reducing agents. This won't touch an acetal. It won't touch the ketal, okay? So that, that makes it a pretty good protecting group. Um, it's also resistant to Grignard reagents, okay? It's resistant to alkyl lithium reagents. These are very powerful reagents, but they won't touch an acetal or a ketal. Uh, they're also resistant to, to hydroxide um, or, or bases like that, or for that matter, um, even strong amid bases. Okay, so these functionalities are like rocks when it comes to anionic reagents, okay? They are not stable, right? So they do react with um, acidic uh, reagents though, okay? So you, you treat an acetal with, with a proton and it's going to react. Um, and the reason is that you, you probably noticed that we talked about the mechanism to form an acetal it involved acid. So as soon as you treat an acetal with a, with a proton, you start to enable that reverse mechanism where it can, it can decompose back to the carbonyl. But in terms of, of anionic reagents, um, these will not touch acetals and ketals. And the reason is because there's no proton. There's no available proton in an acetal or ketal to be deprotonated, so there's nothing that can happen. Okay, well, this turns out to be very useful um, because now we can uh, have a, a very straightforward way to protect an aldehyde or ketone um, if we need to do uh, use some of these other reagents elsewhere in the molecule. Okay, so protecting um, carbonyls as acetals or ketals. Okay, so remember, anytime we have a protecting group, there's three things we need. We need the protecting group to go on, we need it to be stable while we do other chemistry, and then we need it to come off, okay? And so putting on and coming off um, under simple conditions is very important. So what we're going to do as a synthetic tool then is to take um, our carbonyl, our substrate, um, and we can say that it might be an aldehyde. Um, we're going to uh, then do a uh, acetylization or, or ketalization, so it, one thing we might do is treat it with excess alcohol um, in the presence of some proton, and that will give us, in this case, the, the dimethyl acetal. Okay. So there's our two methoxies, okay? And uh, the byproduct here is water, of course, okay? So that would be a protection of that aldehyde. So I, you say I protected the aldehyde as a dimethyl acetal, okay? So we could go off and do chemistry on this thing. Um, and then when we need to, to remove it, all we're going to do is also treat it with, um, with a proton, right? So just get our acid back. And then we're going to have water around. We're going to have excess water to push the equilibrium back to the carbonyl, okay? So excess, excess alcohol goes forward, excess water goes backwards. And, and it's just as simple as that to protect and deprotect. Okay, well, <clears throat> let, let me show you um, an example of how this can be useful. So let me say that I have this ketone and it's got this ester group over here. And what I really, uh, what I really need to do is to um, add uh, a dimethyl Grignard to this ester to get to a tertiary alcohol. Um, but I don't want to add it to the ketone. So how can I accomplish that? See, the problem here is that if I treat this with methyl Grignard directly, um, the ketone is going to be the most reactive. Um, and then if I have excess, I might, I will react with the ester. Um, but the problem is I'm going to end up with this molecule, right, where I've just added methyls everywhere. Um, and, and if that's not what I want, I need to do something to protect that carbonyl. So what I can do is to protect it as a ketal. 
Um, now, one really uh, useful um, protecting group uh, for, for ketal or acetal formation um, is this diol. So this is ethylene glycol, ethylene glycol, which you probably know best as antifreeze. Okay, but it's just a simple diol uh, derived from ethylene. Um, and this is useful, so you put, in, put this in uh, along with proton, and this forms a cyclic ketal. So there we go. All right, so we've just formed the, the ethylene glycol ketal of our ketone. Um, and uh, you know, if you want more practice, uh, it, it would be a useful exercise for you to draw the arrow pushing mechanism for the formation um, of, a, of an ethylene glycol ketal. Um, and there's no difference um, from what we've seen before. It's just that both alcohols are tied together. So you first add one and then you, and then you get to add the other to form the ring. Slightly different context, but all the chemistry is the same. Okay, so now we're at this point and we've protected our uh, ketone as a ketal. It's no longer reactive to methyl Grignard or, or any Grignard, okay? So now I can add my two equivalents of methyl Grignard to react with the ester and that's going to go really well because I've protected my ketone. Okay. So of course this is after acidic workup. I've got my protonated alcohol. And now all I have to do to get to my desired material is to treat this with some proton um, and, and water. And I will then deprotect Oops, sorry. I will deprotect the ketal. And there's my product where I've selectively added to the ester instead of the ketone by protecting the ketone. Okay. So that's a very, very, very useful thing uh, to be able to do. Okay. So uh, we'll, we'll deal with some protecting group uh, issues in the, the problem set, but in general, um, hopefully you can see that uh, it, it provides a, a very useful way um, to, uh, to, uh, you know, to take a, a aldehyde or ketone um, sort of out of the reactivity game while we do uh, something else to the other part of the molecule. And putting on and, and taking off is actually very straightforward.